Electric vehicle battery technology just keeps on getting better and better and better and better. And you know what this means? It's game over for legacy automakers. Unless they pull their literal finger out of their butts and start recognizing the fact that electric cars will take over the market within 10 years entirely. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. Great to see you. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing, liking, commenting, and just generally supporting logic. If you're watching this channel, you're probably a smart person. Seriously, I've actually surveyed the IQ of watchers of this channel, and the average IQ is 160. So clearly, you're all very intelligent people. Now, I made all of that up, but seriously, I think it's probably true. So what does this mean? Well, it's game over for gas mobiles as electric vehicle batteries just keep on getting better and better. Now, Clean Technica recently reported that a little known company in the US state of Washington has hatched a plan to accelerate global decarbonization with a new formula for electric vehicle batteries. Somewhere in the outer reaches of talk radio, they said, a ghost stalks the halls, mumbling of light bulbs and plastic bags and electric cars that won't start in cold weather. Meanwhile, most automakers are not waiting around for the other shoe to drop. They have finally begun pivoting into the sparkling green world of zero emission personal mobility, even those who were once wedded to the idea of clean diesel or clean hydrogen and a new battery formula is here to help speed this up. Now, I've got a laugh here. Clean diesel. <laughs> I mean, how many, how many people actually bought into that, that, that nonsense or clean coal or clean hydrogen? I mean, come on, wake up and smell the roses. Now, fortunately, like I said, viewers of this channel actually have a brain and they know what they're talking about. So fortunately, you guys are smart enough to know and not fall for these kinds of clever marketing tricks. Back in 2010, conservative pundits had great fun trashing General Motors Chevy Volt gas electric hybrid, among other new electric vehicles. I remember people mocked them. They said that electric vehicles were golf carts or toys or child's toys. That's even what the media said. I mean, most people in the media had no idea what they were saying, what they were doing. All they were trying to do was publish stories for clickbait. Now, one good example was Rush Limbaugh, whose eponymous radio program, The Rush Limbaugh Show, ended last summer following the pundits passing at age 70 last February. It's really tough to argue against a smooth, quiet, reliable, fun to drive, cheaper to own vehicle, which you could recharge at home instead of having to detour over to a stinky gas station so battery range provided an initial area of focus for Limbo and others. Unfortunately for them, range has significantly improved over the years and they had to find another place in which to sling mud. Now, in addition to that, obviously, battery costs have come down enormously over the last decade. So where did Rush go after that tired old argument was no longer resonating with his listeners? Well, it explains why in August 2019, he made a recording, which is still available online as of the time of this video, in which he provided a list of battery complaints about everything but range. The litany covers toxic chemicals, you've probably heard that one before, recycling issues, and cold start problems. Now, speaking of recycling issues, the ABC in Australia here, the national broadcaster, which is funded by billions of dollars of public money and just spits out mostly nonsense, unfortunately, recently, well, yesterday, wrote an article saying how battery cycling, the fact that you need to recycle batteries, is a bad thing. I mean, the person who did this couldn't have been, who wrote this article could not have been any more freaking stupid. I mean, think about this. Eventually, maybe in 20 to 25 years, we'll have enough minerals in the entire battery supply chain. We'll know how long we have to dig any more of them up. That's a, that's a known fact. He could have worked that out in a five second Google search. What that'll mean is there'll be an entire ecosystem of battery sub minerals, which that's all we'll need. You know, we'll have the lithium, we'll have the iron, the phosphate, the nickel, the cobalt, if we're still using cobalt by then, which we probably won't be, the aluminium, the lithium, we'll have all we need. 
it'll be in the supply chain. And battery technology will only get better and better. So the whole recycling concept is actually brilliant. Now remember, battery recycling wasn't so good 10 years ago. But within the last few years, companies have worked out efficient ways to recycle almost any lithium battery. Now, this Rush Limbaugh clown blabbed on about other nonsense about electric cars and just wanted you to believe anything for, to get clicks, to make it sound terrible, because that's what his listeners wanted to buy into. But if the concern really is all about the environment, then perhaps a more helpful approach would be to take the advantage of any available mass transit, walking, cycling, and e-biking options, especially e-biking and more e-biking even in the suburbs. Now, I read several articles within the last few months showing that there's been huge studies done over the last 12 months showing that people who buy an e-bike actually burn more calories than those who buy a regular bike on average. In fact, significantly more. Why? Because they actually use them. The average person that buys a bike does it as an exercise fad. It lasts for a month and then the bike goes in the shed and it's never used again. The brilliant thing about e-bikes is they make it just easy enough for you to still want to ride them. But you still burn calories and you continue to use them because they're fun. Now, where were we? Oh, right, electric vehicle batteries. The good news is that new apps and new vehicle systems are pretty much erasing this cold start issue. Even for lithium-ion phosphate batteries, which did have a problem with this in the past, no longer. If there ever really was much of one, it was more dramatic stories like, I live in Alaska, Therefore, I can't buy an electric car. Well, even that has changed. The better news is that the global recycling infrastructure is beginning to ramp up. Now, over the past 12 months, there has been a litany of battery breakthroughs. You're probably getting tired of hearing about them. I've made several videos about them. And I'm going to tell you right now, I believe the biggest battery breakthrough was when Elon Musk said that lithium ion phosphate batteries are the battery chemistry of the future. And I believe another breakthrough, believe it or not, was the fact that LG Chem's batteries had to be recalled from Hyundai and General Motors vehicles. And then LG Chem went, oh shit, well, why don't we just use lithium ion phosphate batteries? Because, well, they're pretty good now. They're cheap. Lithium and iron are incredibly abundant. We won't have the supply chain issues that we have with the other chemistries. And lithium ion phosphate batteries are much, much safer and you can charge them 100% and drain them to 0% and you can get more charging cycles out of them sometimes double and triple depending on what you're comparing them to so what's happened is there's been huge improvements in durability and lifespan with batteries if you buy a car now you're getting a much better car than you bought five years ago and the same will be true in five years from now so that brings me to the point of clean technica's article which is the US firm Group 14 Technologies. Last year, the startup won an award of 4, 4 million US dollars through the Energy Department's New Energy Storage Grand Challenge, based on the potential for widespread rapid adoption of its proprietary silicon carbon anode formula. Why does this matter? Well, we'll get to that in a second. Upon receiving the award, Group 14 explained that its breakthrough nanomaterials technology scaffold prime is a patented elegantly simple carbon chemistry process that transforms ultra-high purity raw precursors to silicon carbon material, which is then turned into the ideal electrochemical properties per given use case. What does all that mean? Basically a bunch of jargon, right? Well, the short version. The improvements offered by Group 14's silicon carbon technology include ease of manufacturing in addition to enhanced battery performance compared to typical electric vehicle batteries, which are made out of graphite anodes or some version. When Group 14 announced the award last year, it mentioned working towards commercialization with its key partner, Cabot Corporation of Boston, and the firms Pharasis of China, Silitron X of Wisconsin, and Arkema of France, along with the Energy Department's Pacific Northwest National Laboratories. A lot can happen in one year, including the addition of new key partners last month, Group 14 announced an agreement with the Slovakian energy storage firm Innobat, which is forming its business model around battery recycling and the use of sustainable materials. They're not doing that just to be nice. In terms of sustainability, members of the carbine public have high expectations 
for electric vehicles. Buyers, including fleet managers, want to know about life cycle emissions all the way up through the supply chain. In keeping with that sentiment, last month, Group 14 CEO and co-founder Rick Lube explained why the company chose the state of Washington for its manufacturing ability. Two of the biggest reasons we decided to base Group 14 technologies in Washington are the access to clean power as well as the state's aggressive sustainability initiatives to rapidly decarbonize over the next few decades. It is encouraging to see strong private and public support for the development of a local clean energy economy. So is this the last gasp for gas mobiles? It could be. The latest news from Group 14 affirms that the Energy Department award is working as it was intended. Sometimes government grants can be very effective. Last week, the, last week, the company reported that Ferasus Energy found a 25% energy boost for its EV batteries made with Group 14's SCCS5 silicon carbon anodes. 25% is an enormous difference. By 25% energy boost, what do they mean? Well, they mean a 25% increase in energy density, which translates into increased battery range without loss of performance. Now the question I have in my mind is, does this 25% increase in efficiency apply to lithium iron phosphate batteries? Because if it does, this is a game changer of all game changers. This completely changes the global market for lithium iron phosphate batteries. For those of you keeping score at home, Frasis CTO, Dr. Keith Kepler notes that an energy density of 260 watts per kilo is pretty good for electric vehicle batteries. With Group 14's new anode, the expectation is 330 watts per kilo. Speaking of Farasis, that's where the Volvo connection actually comes in. Farasis is already partners with Geely, the Chinese company that purchased the car making end of Volvo business. A while back, trucks and buses are made by Volvo Group, a separate company. Now, if you're not already aware of this, I made a video about Volvo's IPO and Polestar's IPO. Both of them are going to happen this year, apparently, but it could be early next year. And should you invest? Well, this is some interesting technology and it could be a game changer. I actually made some recommendations on whether or not you should invest in that video. I'll put a link in the description below. Check that video out if you haven't already. Now, this Volvo connection obviously is significant because Volvo cars used to be known for the use of diesel engines back in the day when clean diesel was a thing and many people believed in this myth. Then the company got dinged by the diesel emission scandal that embroiled Volkswagen during the Obama presidency and now it seems that it will court the next generation of car buyers with technology that really is clean. Volvo is doing things seriously with electric cars. So is Polestar and so is Geely. Mercedes could be one step ahead of Volvo in the diesel to EV switch. Ferasis also has a relationship with Daimler which has sheltered the Mercedes-Benz name since the 1920s. It can't be a moment too soon for Mercedes to drop its diesel engines into the bin, the dustbin of history. The car maker is among those suffering through the repercussions of the diesel scandal. And it currently is facing a new lawsuit from a consumer group over the affair. Last summer, Mercedes took steps to restore its brand reputation with a splashy new EV announcement featuring battery range that could top 600 miles which should put all that talk range of range anxiety on permanent vacation. If you think about it, there's still idiots going on about this range anxiety issue. And I'm saying, mate, by 2030, if you can get an EV now with 600 miles of range, I mean, you can even buy an electric car now, a Chinese electric car now, that's not all that expensive with 600 miles of range. I'll put a link in the description below to that car, by the way, which has had a lot of views on that video. Just imagine though what the range will be by 2030 seeing these continued energy efficiency increases in battery tech. Mercedes is not taking anything for granted though. Concurrent with its EV announcement, the company also enlisted Shell, yes, Shell, the petrochemical company, to help beef up its plans for building out the EV charging station network. Now Shell is obviously trying to pivot here because, well, eventually their petrol stations will be worthless and The fuel they sell to those stations or sell at those stations won't be in any sort of significant demand. So they're trying to move to electric vehicle charging, which I believe is a smart move. Now, as batteries keep on getting cheaper, the range improves and the recycling supply chain 
becomes established. The end will come soon for dirty ice vehicles. Now, announcements like these often don't pan out. However, I believe this is different. I believe there is that the technology we're talking about here will actually be used in the industry. Now, on August the 25th, 2020, Tesla's boss, Elon Musk, in one of his latest tweets, hinted that high energy dense battery cells, a level of 400 watts per kilo with high cycle life and being produced in volume are not far away. Now, Elon expects those kinds of batteries on the market 2023 or 2024. That is not very far away. The future is exciting. I love it. Thanks for supporting. Thanks for liking the videos. And thanks for watching. Hope to see you on the next one. Bye-bye.